After the death of King Robert Baratheon and the execution of Lord Eddard Stark, civil war became inevitable. The major houses of Westeros rallied to their allies, and factions that had long been preparing behind the scenes now put their plans into motion. Nearly every major territory would ally itself with a would-be king. In the North, there was King Robb Stark, who commanded the loyalty of the North and the Riverlands. In an attempt to court the Iron Islands to his cause, he sent his greatest friend, Theon Greyjoy, to treat with his father, Lord Balon Greyjoy, on behalf of the Northern King. He proposed an alliance against the Lannisters and a treaty recognizing the sovereignty of the Iron Islands as well as the North and the Riverlands, making Balon Greyjoy a king. But true to his traditional ways, Balon refused to be given a crown and instead would take it, convincing Theon to betray Rob and planning to use the war in the South as an opportunity to attack the North. The capital of King's Landing, the surrounding Crown Lands, and the Westerlands were loyal to King Joffrey Baratheon, though his support came not from House Baratheon, but rather House Lannister on his mother's side. With the King still a young boy, his Queen Mother, Cersei Lannister, acted as regent, and her Lord Father, Tywin Lannister, served as Hand of the King. But while he commanded his armies in the field, his youngest son, the dwarf Tyrion Lannister, having impressed his father with his knowledge of strategy and politics, was sent as acting Hand of the King. On Dragonstone, King Stannis Baratheon, eldest brother of the deceased King Robert Baratheon, declared himself the rightful king of Westeros, based on the claim that Joffrey Baratheon was a child of incest between Queen Cersei and her brother, Jaime Lannister. This claim would make all of Robert's children illegitimate, and as the eldest Baratheon male, Stannis would inherit the throne. Yet he is supported only by a small fraction of the Baratheon bannermen, with most of the Stormlands declared for King Renly Baratheon, the youngest brother of King Robert, who was also supported by the powerful armies of House Tyrell and the Reach. Though Renly had no legitimate claim to the throne, he was more well-liked than Stannis and had strong ties to House Tyrell as a base of power. Dorne remained nominally aligned to King's Landing and King Joffrey, though their loyalty at this point was uncertain and they had made no great effort to publicly declare for a faction. The Vale was another territory whose loyalty was in question. They remained neutral throughout the conflict, but many suspected they would eventually ally with Robb Stark, given that Lysa Arryn, Lady of the Eyrie, was his aunt through Catelyn Stark. The ensuing chaos became known as the War of Five Kings, and the Riverlands would be the first territory to feel its devastation, with its lands trapped between warring armies. Yet the war was not contained to the battlefield. Instead, other means were often used, sometimes going to extreme measures for seemingly noble ends. Stannis Baratheon, facing overwhelming odds, adopted the religion of the Red God, with plans to use his priestess Lady Melisandre and her dark magic on his behalf. She agreed to help him, believing he was an ancient hero reborn a savior who would defeat the coming armies of darkness. She was a sorceress of powerful magic who saw visions in flames and had convinced herself she must guide him to his destiny at all costs. Stannis, confident in his new power, gave Renly one last chance to abandon his ambitions and pledge himself to the rightful king. But Renly refused, and so Stannis ordered his death. Melisandre used her magic to birth a shadow assassin that made its way into Renly's camp and killed the claimant king. Upon learning of the death of Renly, the Stormlands rally around Stannis, while House Tyrell of the Reach retreat to their territories, now needing to rethink their plans. With his forces now marshaled, Stannis and his newly named Hand of the King, Sir Davos Seaworth, set sail to invade King's Landing and take the throne from Joffrey the Pretender once and for all. Meanwhile, King Robb Stark was winning battle after battle against the Lannister armies, but suffered a major setback with the betrayal of Theon Greyjoy and the Ironborn invasion of the North. In his despair, he found solace in Talisa Megir, a noblewoman from Essos. This, however, was problematic as he was betrothed to the daughter of Lord Frey, one of his most important Riverland allies. In addition to all this, his most prominent hostage, Sir Jaime Lannister, was freed by his mother, Catelyn, who hoped that this action would convince the Lannisters to release her daughters, which she believed were being held in King's Landing. King Rob was greatly angered by this betrayal and confined his mother to her quarters. An important bannerman, Lord Rickard Karstark, was also made furious, as he wanted to exact vengeance upon Sir Jaime, who murdered his son, Torin Karstark, in a failed escape attempt. Rob, now facing a number of complications, consulted with his men and devised a way to free the North from the Greyjoy invasion. He decided to send the son of his general, Roose Bolton, with an army of 500 men to free his home of Winterfell. After spending so much time with Talisa, he finally gave in to temptation, marrying her and breaking his betrothal to House Frey. His mother was shocked and warned him that this would create a rift between his allies. Though he had won every battle in the field, he was now struggling with the internal politics of being a king. In the north, House Greyjoy had invaded and plundered the land, 
Theon Greyjoy, son of the King and former ally of Robb Stark, took it upon himself to capture Winterfell and held the two Stark children, Bran and Rickon, hostage. Fortunately, with the aid of their direwolves, Summer and Shaggy Dog, and their servants, Hodor and Asha, the Stark boys managed to escape and head north to find help from Jon Snow at the Wall. As for the other Stark children, Sansa continued to live as a hostage of House Lannister in the capital, while Arya Stark traveled north with Yarin of the Night's Watch, pretending to be a boy named Harry to hide her true identity. The Northmen, led by the bastard son of Roose Bolton, managed to take back Winterfell without a fight by bribing and then betraying the Ironborn, capturing Theon Greyjoy. In King's Landing, acting Hand of the King, Tyrion Lannister, immediately set to work reforming and reorganizing the capital, as it had fallen to ruin under the tenure of his sister, the Queen Regent, and his nephew, King Joffrey. Tyrion prepared the city as best he could for the coming invasion of Stannis Baratheon, organizing defense forces and preparing a wildfire attack against their ships. When the battle commenced, the forces of Tyrion Lannister were able to hold the enemy armies outside of the city walls, with Tyrion even leading a charge of men into the battle and suffering an injury to his face that left him unconscious. But even with Tyrion's great efforts, the Baratheon forces eventually overwhelmed the city defenses. But just as all seemed lost, the armies of Lord Tywin Lannister rode into battle, with his new allies in House Tyrell beating back the Baratheon forces. Stannis was dragged from the battlefield by his men, and they fled in whatever ships remained. The Lannisters were victorious. In the end, Tyrion was stripped of his titles, and it was Tywin who was praised as the savior of King's Landing. Stannis was forced into retreat, and was now faced with reassembling the remains of his army. House Greyjoy had some secure holdings in the north, but had lost Winterfell and the son of King Balon. King Rob continued to win in battle, but faced the wrath of his own men as his alliances fell apart. And in the capital, Lord Varys the Spider and Littlefinger, the Master of Coin, both openly remained loyal to the crown, while in secret continued to work, manipulating events for purposes as yet unknown. Beyond the Wall, the men of the Night's Watch ventured in full force, ready to face whatever dangers lurk in the frozen north. To aid them in their journey, there was the wild man, Craster, a man of depravity who married his daughters and used them to birth more daughters for his future pleasure. Despite his obvious faults, he had long been a friend to the Watch and lent his home as a sanctuary for the Black Brothers on their journey. Craster told the Lord Commander of a vast army being raised by the King Beyond the Wall, Mance Raider. He also spoke of rumors surrounding the undead who now walked the land in service to the White Walkers. The Lord Commander decided to send a scouting mission, including Jon Snow and the veteran Corrin Halfhand, to find the gathering wildling army and collect whatever information might be useful in the battle to come. As the men moved across the frozen wasteland, they encountered a group of wildlings and kill all but a young woman, Egret. Jon Snow was left to finish the job while the others continued to move forward. However, Jon could not bring himself to kill a defenseless woman. Egret took advantage and ran away, forcing Jon to run after her and bind her hands. Unfortunately, by the time he caught her, he was lost and unsure how to catch up to his brothers. A bond grew between Ygret and Jon, though at first he refused her advances because of his oath to the Watch. It's not long before other wildlings find them and to his surprise, Corrin Halfhand was already their prisoner. Ygret convinced the wildlings to spare Jon and bring him before Mance Raider due to the fact that he was the son of the Lord of Winterfell. As they marched, Halfhand told Jon that he must infiltrate the wildlings and learn as much as he could, and then when possible, return turned to the Lord Commander to make his report. Jon was confused and did not understand how this could be accomplished, but it was all made clear when Halfhand attacked him and forced Jon to kill him. Having seen Jon murder a fellow brother, the Wildlings were convinced that he could be trusted and released him from captivity. Meanwhile, Sam Tarly and some of the Black Brothers were out collecting wood for the camp. As they worked, they heard the bellow of a horn back at camp. They heard the first blast, which meant Jon and the scouts had returned. They heard a second blast. It wasn't Jon, it was Wildlings attacking the camp. They heard a third, which could only mean White Walkers. Daenerys Stormborn, known as the last daughter of House Targaryen, former Khaleesi of the Dothraki Horde, and now Mother of Dragons. With her rebirth in the funeral pyre of her beloved Khal Drogo, dragons had returned to the world, and with them many believed the magic of Old Valyria. Yet despite this tremendous gift, Daenerys found herself in perilous circumstances. The majority of the Dothraki Horde had abandoned her after the death of her husband, and she became lost in the desert of the Red Waste, stranded with the last of her starving and dehydrated followers. 
Rose. Desperate for salvation, she sent riders to seek help, and they led her to the prosperous city of Karth. Upon arrival, she addressed the Council of Thirteen, who ran the city, and she pled for refuge. She was denied, but for one man, Zaro Zoendoxus, who vouched for her and granted her sanctuary in his home. Unfortunately, things quickly took a turn for the worst, and her dragons were kidnapped by the warlock Piat Pri. Pri executed the Council of Thirteen and revealed himself to be the partner of Zaro Zoendoxus, who had betrayed Daenerys in exchange for being made king of Karth. As she returned to gather her men, she discovered that they too had been slaughtered, and only her advisor, Jorah Mormont, remained. Together, they traveled to the House of the Undying, where the warlock had placed her dragons. She entered and discovered a maze of illusions and magic that preyed upon her vulnerabilities and desires. Eventually, she was captured by Piat Pri, but was able to call upon her dragons to burn down the House of the Undying and kill the warlock, freeing them from captivity. Upon escaping with her dragons, she found Zaro Zoendoxus with one of her handmaidens, who she discovered had also betrayed her. Daenerys locked them both inside Zaro's vault, leaving them to die slow and painful deaths. She then claimed his riches and prepared to buy ships and soldiers for her return to Westeros, where she would retake the Iron Throne with fire and blood. A special thanks to all those who have contributed to Civilization X. You make these videos possible, and I am eternally grateful for your support. If you would like to help Civilization X, and want a say in the future content of this channel, click on the Patreon link in the description box below, and pledge any amount you'd like on a monthly basis. Or if you would prefer to make a single donation, you can use the PayPal link also in the description below. And please be sure to like and subscribe, and click on the links to see more.